we overestimate the negative impact on failure and underestimate our ability to handle it when we're imagining towards yep. the future of yep. this failure thing. And what I'm finding is just the more reps I do it, the more times I do it, you do normalize to it. Yeah. So I think like I get that fear and I recognize that it is different when you're in front of other people. But it's one of those things that just like you just it's exposure therapy and fail small in front of small groups of people. And yep. then you can eventually fail bigger and bigger. But even still, like I will say this framework really does help. You know, I'll have videos that will bomb and there'll be a 10 out of my last 10, like, and it stings. It's like falling in that pit, but it's like, oh, you know what though? This kind of makes sense because we started a little differently and we did it this way. And so immediately just the way my brain works and that's a big failure, Mel, in front of a lot of people. Yeah. And it, it stinks for a day, but immediately the way the framework works is I'm like, what did I, what did I learn from that? And I call that thinking like an engineer. Meaning like, you know, to get the rover on Mars, we tested so many things because you just don't know. And yeah. no one, if you if, if you have a test that fails at NASA for a landing strut, no one's like, oh, you're a failure. It's like, oh, great. Now we know the limits of what this thing can do. So let's redesign it, right? As an engineer, this is just how you think. Like if you are not failing, that's a problem, Yeah. right? Like you need to be testing the limits to understand like if you're being so conservative on everything, you have no idea how much bigger and cooler this thing could be, right? Each mm -hmm. time you fail, you are learning something. You're learning one more way not to do it. So I think if they could approach it that way and find the positivity in the fail and the learning in the fail, then it gives it a purpose.